Hello, my most amazing scholars of truth, goodness, and beauty. Hello, my most amazing teacher of truth, goodness, and beauty. How are you today? Ready to create. Are 4G scholars too old to have fun with that on the video? Hmm, maybe. They still like to say it in class though. So I am going to show you today how we're gonna start our photography project. Now you're gonna need a couple things. There is this sheet of paper that was included in your packet of art materials that you were supposed to get at the beginning of the year. Now I know there was some mix up with the, whether or not you got all those materials. So if you don't have that sheet of paper, I am going to also upload it onto the website, on my teacher website, so that you can print it off there if you want to. The other thing you're going to need is something to take photos with. So I have here my digital camera, pretty fancy. That's probably not what you're gonna use. I'm guessing some of you have access to a smartphone or a tablet or some kind of device that has a photo app in it. And so that could be what you use today. Now, we are gonna go through this in two sections, in two parts. We're going to go through part of my PowerPoint where I will teach you about two or three of the techniques we're gonna use. And then I'll have you go off and take some pictures using those techniques. And then next week, I will upload another video showing you two or three more tips and techniques and you'll take more pictures then. Now this is for the distance learners. If you're a hybrid learner, you can watch the video just for fun, but I'm gonna teach you this stuff in class and we'll do it um, where I teach you all the tips one day and then we'll go take all the pictures a different day. But we need two weeks to get it all done. So let's take a look at the first few tips for taking awesome photos. The thing that makes photography an art form is that you'll recognize that in photography, you will also see the same elements of art that we use in other kinds of artwork. So for example, on, our, on my first tip for how to take awesome pictures, the element of art that you're gonna notice is texture. All right, so the first tip is get close. I want you to be able to take a picture that is a close up. And the idea here is that you're gonna look for something that has amazing texture. So look at this picture. You'll notice that there is the, there are these tiny little squiggly lines that make up the texture of this flower and all these teeny tiny petals. And you can imagine that if you were able to touch it, you can imagine what it would feel like, how those petals would feel. The other thing is that that is in contrast to the shiny ant. The ant would be very smooth if you were to touch it. And that is contrasting to the texture of the flower. Look at this awesome photo of the baby chick sitting in the farmer's hand. The other thing that I think is so cool about this photo is that the angle that the photographer used is having, you know, the fingertips are pointing forward. Uh, and I think that that's a more interesting angle than if you were just taking the picture looking down on the chick. So you can see here the texture, the interesting texture of the fluffy, fluffy feathers of that bird. And that's in contrast, of course, to the smooth texture of the hand that's holding it. All right, let's see if I have another one. Okay, the next photo is going to be a reminder that you need to do simple background. So I'm gonna show you two different pictures. This picture has this distracting wall art uh, in the background. And it looks kind of like now, like there's a plant growing out of her head. And so this picture over here on the right, where that is not in the picture, is so much better. So um, simple background is going to be the next tip that I want you to use in a photo. Here's an example, too, of a simple background. 
you can see here that the snow surrounding these dogs creates just a very simple background that makes the dogs the star of the show. All right, the last tip that we're gonna go over today is called the rule of thirds. And this is a super important tip. The rule of thirds is in a way of thinking about how to compose your frame. In other words, when you look through your camera, you see like a rectangle that you know, okay, that's what's gonna be in my picture. That's what I call your frame, okay? So all the way around the rectangle. And then you have to pay attention to what is inside the frame, right? And what you need to think about is kind of think about your frame being divided into like a tic-tac-toe grid. So it's thirds. There's two vertical lines and there's two horizontal lines. And every spot where those lines intersect would be a great place to put the subject of your photo or the thing that you really want to draw attention to. Instead of always centering your subject right in the middle, it can be really interesting to balance it by putting it on one of these corners of the rule of thirds. Now, not way down in the corner down here, but like I said, in like, think of it as a tic-tac-toe grid and put your subject in one of those intersecting spaces. So in this particular photo, this grass, that's the really bright greenish yellow color, that's the part that is like the subject of the photo. It's the most important eye popping part of the picture. And so the photographer put that in this area instead of putting it right in the middle. So this one has a couple different things going on. You can see here that the, the thing that is that stands out in this picture is the yellow leaf down here. This would be what we call the, the subject of our picture or the, the thing that we want to draw attention to. So this yellow leaf, instead of putting it right smack dab in the center or way down over here, the photographer put this in a spot that would be the rule of thirds. If you imagine a tic-tac-toe grid, this is about where that bottom right corner would be. The other thing that you're going to see in this picture is this is also a close-up of some interesting texture. So good photographers like to combine different tips to make a great picture. I love all the different treads and the sand and the different kinds of bumpy textures that are in this photograph. Isn't it cool to see that even the bottoms of shoes and, a, and an old yellow leaf can make an interesting photo? Keep that in mind as you start taking pictures. This is a picture that I took. This one is from South Dakota. I went on a trip there with my family. And as I was standing, looking out at the Badlands, these beautiful mountains with the different stripes, I noticed this beautiful yellow daisy, this flower right there. And I thought, oh, I gotta have that as my foreground. That's gotta be my subject, the thing I want in my picture for people to notice. And so I, put it in the rule of thirds, but instead of the bottom right, I put it in the bottom left. And so that works out great too. I wanted to show you that you can choose any one of those corners to put it in. So that one shows the rule of thirds. Okay, so that is as far as I wanted to go. Now I'm gonna pull up a PowerPoint I have that shows photos that were taken by other Parnassus students in previous years. So you can get some ideas of how the students did their photography to match those three tips, close-ups, simple backgrounds, and rule of thirds. Here's a photograph taken a couple years ago. And I wanted to show you this one because it really shows how a simple background can be really effective. And so you'll see that the brick background is um, making it so that the subject of the photo stands out. And I also noticed that the photographer who took this one put him right um, in the rule of thirds like we talked about. So instead of centering him, he's over on the right bottom corner a little bit. So simple background and rule of thirds on that one. 
All right, here's a couple close-ups. Now, this one I'm gonna focus in right here. You can see that there's also some really great lighting going on in this one, which we'll talk about next time. But I wanted to show you that they got really close up to this plant and took a picture to show the various colors and the smooth texture of those leaves. This one right here is also really great because it shows rule of thirds. You can see that there's this great background of these rocks, lots of cool texture there, but then there's this little like red pepper and it's sitting right in this corner that is the rule of thirds. So instead of centering it again, moving it off to the corner. Here is a photo taken by one of my students a couple years ago that showed the grass up close. And I loved how this photographer, you could tell they got down right on their belly and laid in the grass and took a close up there, but then you can see this, all, you know, the school in the background kind of fuzzy. So I thought that one was really successful. So the day that we were taking pictures a couple years ago, um, the students found a cricket. And you can see he's the star of the show in this close-up right here. This reminds me a little bit of that um, picture that we saw with the yellow flower and the ant. So you can see he's sitting on this beautiful leaf and those colors are amazing. And the cricket right there is um, also in the rule of thirds. So again, they didn't center him, they moved him off to the corner and you can see the detail of that insect. The other one that involves the cricket reminds me of the one with the chick in the hand because one of the students put the cricket on his hand and they got a close up of the insect that way. And I do think it's really cool to have the students kind of fuzzy in the background and the clear focused picture is the cricket on the hand. So this is one way to kind of um, deal with not having a simple background. If you can um, figure out on your camera how to focus in on something close up, then it gets everything else in the background kind of fuzzy and out of focus, then that stuff isn't as distracting. Weren't those some fantastic photographs? All the ones I just showed you were taken by my 4G students a couple years ago. And I even have way more I could have shown you. I was really proud of them for how great they did. And we just took pictures right out on the front lawn of Parnassus. So I, I am excited to see what you guys at home come up with. My assignment to you today is to take a camera on your phone or on a device or however it works best for you and walk around your yard or your house or whatever wherever you are and try to get at least three good photos that show that you learned the three tips today. I want to see one that is simple background. I want to see one that is rule of thirds. I want to see one that's a close up. And if you are inspired to even like take extras that put those things together, that would be great too. So you have a close up and the rule of thirds. I would like you to take some photos, only send me the best ones. So upload it to Seesaw, send it to me. Um, if there's a better way, like if it's easier for you to put it on a Word document and print it out, you can do that. If it's easier for you to make a quick little, um, like a little show or a little movie, you can do that. Otherwise, just um, upload it to Seesaw and I will check those out when I look in my Seesaw app. I want to remind you that this piece of paper will need to be filled out and it doesn't have to be turned in yet because I got to teach you all six tips before you finish this one. But I want you to um, fill out a description of the photo that you took that matches each one of the tips. So for example, uh, the first one says close up. Look for texture, repetition, and interesting detail photo description. Now, if you were the person like um, from my class a couple years ago that took a picture of the cricket, you would just write here, cricket in my hand. And that would tell me that that was the photo that you intended for close up. 
Um, so don't forget that once you've turned in your photos for these three first tips, write the description on your paper. And then next week you'll finish the last three and then I'll expect you to take a picture of your paper to send to me. Okay, thank you. I'll see you next week.